Well, continuing on in, in other uh, parts of the uh, world, um, you'll see shortly the transcript of the Secretary's intervention this morning in New York uh, as the uh, UN marked the 10th anniversary of Security Council Resolution uh, 1325. Uh, in her remarks, uh, you know, the Secretary outlined the four pillars of the U.S. strategy in uh, recognizing and supporting the essential role that women play in all aspects of peace and security, uh, including promoting you know, greater participation uh, by women in, in government and, uh, uh, and, and playing an increasingly uh, significant role in preventing conflict and instability, uh, focusing on uh, relief and recovery, uh, ensuring that uh, uh, all members of society, but particularly women, uh, have access to basic survival requirements uh, helping to make sure that women and children are protected from widespread violence uh, that helps uh, prevent conflict and instability, and then integrating uh, uh, the interests of women uh, and gender considerations into uh, long-term U.S. Uh, programs in conflict-affected areas. On the margins uh, of today's meeting, uh, the Secretary uh, had a uh, bilateral with Austrian Foreign Minister uh, you know, Spindelegger. Uh, today is uh, Austria National Day, uh, but they talked about law enforcement cooperation uh, and, uh, and regional uh, security as well. Also uh, going on in, uh, in Nagoya, Japan. It's not just Austrian National Day, is it? It's something else today. It's a big deal, no? It even came up. Your boss, you're forgetting your boss's birthday. No, we already, we already, uh, we, 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 we highlight, we highlight that fact before the Associated Press uh, came into the room. Oh, you did. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> we also don't talk about it. Is it the holiday? Huh? <laughs> but uh, in in Nagoya, Japan, uh, you have the tenth conference of the parties of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Um, the high-level segment of the meeting is taking place over the next, you know, three days. Uh, and uh, the United States has sent a strong interagency team uh, to participate in the convention, uh, led by uh, Assistant Secretary for Oceans, International Environment, and Scientific Affairs, uh, Dr. Carrie Ann Jones, but including participation from the Departments of Agriculture, Commerce, uh, and Interior, NOAA, USAID, and the Patent and Trademark Office. But uh, we continue to work with the parties to develop a practical, workable regime on access and benefit sharing of genetic resources that fall under the convention uh, to emphasize science-based decision-making in all aspects of biodiversity conservation and to develop ambitious yet measurable and achievable uh, post-2010 uh, you know, strategies. Uh, and uh, finally, before uh, you know, taking your questions, you know, we just continue our focus uh, on the situation uh, in Haiti. Uh, we do believe that uh, uh, the pace of, of uh, outbreak of the cholera uh, epidemic uh, has modified. Uh, there are confirmed, as at this point, 259 deaths uh, and 3,342 uh, you know, total patients. But we continue to work both with the government of Haiti uh, and our national agencies and international partners uh, to provide a variety of assistance uh, to the government to strengthen its ability uh, to minimize the, uh, uh, the potential uh, for this disease. That's what does modified mean? The pace is modified. I'm sorry, what? You said the pace of the cholera outbreak the, is moderated. Modified. I'm sorry, moderated. Moderated. Yeah, uh, wow. which gives us some encouragement, but obviously, uh, you yeah, know, there's still a considerable danger once a cholera uh, makes its way into a, a fragile society like Haiti. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's any update on the talks between uh, the U.S. and uh, other international officials and Karzai and his government about the ban on private contractors, security contractors. Uh, we, we continue to work uh, with, with the government uh, on, uh, on a path forward uh, that uh, both um, supports uh, the decree uh, and at the same time you know, makes sure that uh, you know, critical uh, projects uh, can continue uh, to move forward. Um, it is absolutely uh, appropriate that uh, uh, the government of Afghanistan uh, be able to uh, regulate uh, uh, private security contractors. Uh, it is our long-term goal uh, for 
Afghanistan to take responsibility for its own security. Uh, we completely support what the President is trying to do. Uh, but, you know, this is uh, still a work in progress. And what do you make of, the, uh, of, of President Karzai's rant yesterday about the uh, negative influence and impact of the West in Afghanistan? Uh, you know, I mean, the, the President has been focused on this for some time. Uh, he, uh, well, which, which well President, President uh, Karzai, uh, he has, uh, uh, in, in a number of interactions uh, with U.S. officials, including Secretary Clinton, you know, talked about the impact that these operations have on the Afghan people. Uh, and, uh, you know, various incidents that have taken place where Afghan citizens have been uh, killed or injured. We completely understand and support what the President uh, is trying to do. Uh, this has an impact on uh, the Afghan people and has an impact on Afghan attitudes towards the efforts of the international community and the United States uh, to provide uh, security and uh, long-term prosperity uh, to Afghanistan. So, you know, just to reiterate again, we, we understand and are completely supportive of what President Karzai uh, is trying to do. Uh, and we're trying to help him understand that, uh, you know, we, we have to have a, a path forward that, uh, that uh, you know, gains greater visibility, regulation over uh, at these, uh, uh, these contractors, uh, affects a transition uh, from uh, reliance on contractors to reliance on the indigenous uh, security <coughs> forces but at the same time uh, allows, uh, you know, important uh, operations uh, to continue. That, that is something we're trying to do. We think that there is a, a solution uh, that uh, is achievable uh, that can balance these uh, requirements, and that's what we're working with the government on. Are you, are you in your tweet on Saturday, you talked about the Secretary saying, I think it was a joint plan, coming up with a joint plan with the Afghans to figure out how to move forward. Has the U.S. actually put anything specific on the table as far as a plan to get to exactly what you're talking about? And if so, what, what is it? How can you balance these two uh, competing requirements? Well, I, I, you know, I mean, I think we, 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 we are supportive of a transition uh, where, you know, today there is a significant reliance on uh, <coughs> private security contractors because there is a, a gap between uh, the security needs in Afghanistan and the availability and capability of Afghan national security forces. Uh, you know, the, the issue is how do we get from here to there? Uh, you know, what, what is the path forward and, and what is the length of time required, you know, to make a, a, an effective uh, transition? You know, that's what we're talking about. It's, you know, so it, have it, you made specific proposals about what that path is? And if so, are the Afghans engaging with you on those specific proposals? We, we, we are in discussion uh, with, uh, with the Afghan government. We've shared some ideas. Uh, you know, with President Karzai uh, and his team. We are working through uh, <coughs> those ideas, and, and we want to get to a, uh, a, a place where, where, where we can best uh, uh, fulfill the, uh, the objective, the sovereign objective of the President and his decree. Follow up on that question. Sure. Uh, India is having a large number of development projects inside Afghanistan, uh, and they depend on... Start again, Lily. India is having a large number of developmental projects inside Afghanistan, and depend on and they depend on private securities for the protection. Are you having any talks with the Indian authorities on this issue, uh, or any other countries? Uh, well, I, 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 again, you know, I'll go back to Sunday, uh, where uh, uh, there was a, um, a broad meeting, uh, because you know this is an issue that does potentially affect. Uh, the United States and our development partners, and it, it also affects the international operations of, of many other countries that have a presence uh, in Afghanistan. So the, this is, this is a, a complex, multifaceted uh, challenge, uh, you know, but, uh, but you know, not just the United States. You know, other countries likewise rely on you know, private security contractors uh, uh, to secure these operations, uh, and, and as the international community, you know, together with the United States, we're trying to, uh, you know, find a, a sustainable path forward uh, under the leadership of the Afghan government. And following on of Matt's question, what kind of relationship you have you have now with President Karzai, uh, and how is it different from the previous administration when it was very smooth, uh, no public? Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I can't characterize the difference between, uh, you know. Now and then, I wasn't here then. Um, president Karzai is the president of a sovereign country. Uh, 
uh, our strategy is in support of, of his government and uh, working with his government uh, to help the people uh, of Afghanistan. Um, we have a, an effective relationship with President Karzai. The Secretary uh, you know, talks to uh, President Karzai on a regular basis. Uh, uh, as we indicated, you know, she, uh, she was in contact with him on Saturday as part of one of her you know, regularly scheduled uh, you know, calls uh, with him. Uh, we are, he is a partner. We are working closely with he and his government uh, you know, to uh, improve the security of the country. Uh, uh, General Petraeus and Ambassador Eikenberry meet with him on a regular basis. So I would, I would describe uh, our relationship as, as very solid and, and uh, you know, working uh, to fulfill uh, our mutual interests. Thank you. Josh. Thanks. Uh, on Haiti. On Haiti. Uh, tomorrow will mark the three-month anniversary since President Obama signed the Supplemental Spending Bill, which uh, appropriated $1.15 billion for Haiti reconstruction and recovery. Uh, as of last week, no, none of that money had been uh, sent to Haiti as the State Department and Congress uh, discussed <coughs> the implementation plan. I'm wondering if you can give us an update. Has any of that money been dispersed? And if not, why not? Well, um, we have uh, uh, allocated 1.15 billion in assistance, as you just mentioned. Uh, that includes assistance from DOD, uh, as well as uh, 660 million in, in emergency relief uh, provided by USAID. You know, much of that money uh, has already been dispensed, uh, but uh, we have money standing by for longer-term projects, uh, as we have. Uh, uh, you know, mentioned as you saw you know, last month uh, when the uh, during the UN General Assembly there there was a uh, meeting uh, uh, hosted or, or, or led by Prime Minister Bell Reeve and former President Clinton uh, of the uh, uh, Haiti Reconstruction uh, uh, Commission uh, going through uh, systematically uh, you know the the critical projects for. Uh, important to Haiti's future. During the course of last month's uh, UN General Assembly, uh, there were announcements in terms of uh, cooperation between the United States and France uh, to rebuild a hospital uh, in Haiti. Uh, there was an announcement of a joint venture uh, with, uh, led by a South Korean conglomerate that was going to uh, uh, you know, lead to the development of an industrial park you know, and create uh, some further jobs. As the Haiti Reconstruction Commission uh, validates uh, specific projects, you know, f uh, under the, the Haiti-led, you know, plan, uh, the money is already there uh, to uh, uh, support, you know, these projects. So, you know, th this is part of our effort, you know, working integrally in the international community, working with the Haitian government for a limited period of time. Um, the, you know, the money will be dispensed as specific projects are validated by the uh, the Haitian government uh, and uh, and ready for uh, uh, for uh, construction. Uh, that that's the pro so you know the money has been put aside. Uh, the money is there as uh, and and, we're, and remember we're also you know balancing Haiti's immediate needs with Haiti's long term needs. Um, so uh, the the money is there. Some of it's been spent and some of it's standing by for. Uh, uh, for further, uh, uh, you know, uh, further uh, decisions by the Haiti, Haiti Re Reconstruction Commission. I understand. Just to be clear, I, know, I understand there's been a lot of money spent in Haiti uh, from U.S. government aid for emergency relief, but specifically regarding this pot of $1.15 billion, uh, it was my understanding that the State Department implementation plan was still being discussed with Congress. You're saying that money has been dispensed from that pool despite that those discussions are still going on. Can you tell us how much? Uh, Josh, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I don't have that kind of detail here at the podium. I'll be happy to go through it with you separately. Uh, for the past hour, um, a group, a handful of people, uh, members of the Iranian Mujahideen Khal, have been demonstrating outside this building. All right, start again. I, I, I missed the early part of the. Um, for the last hour. For the uh, last hour. A group. A group of uh, membering a group of people membering the Iranian Mujahideen Khal, the MEK have been demonstrating outside this building, demanding uh, to be delisted from the uh, group of countries, uh, the terrorist groups. Is that something the State Department is considering, reconsidering? Uh, I, I, you know, it, we, we review um, 
information on a regular basis regarding uh, groups and individuals uh, that are on our, uh, our terrorism list. Uh, that is an ongoing process. I know of no you know, particular uh, initiative right now relative to that group. Sure. Uh, do you have any uh, thoughts, concerns, angry statements to make about uh, the latest developments at Bushir? Um, I'm, you know, there's nothing new here. Uh, uh, you know, we, we recognize that the uh, Bushir reactor is designed to provide, you know, civilian nuclear power, uh, and uh, we do not view it as a proliferation risk because it is under IAEA safeguards and because Russia is providing both the needed fuel and then taking back, you know, <coughs> the spent nuclear fuel, which would be the principal source of our proliferation concerns. Um, what is interesting about Bushir is that Iran does not need an indigenous enrichment capability to generate civilian nuclear energy uh, if its intentions are, uh, you know, purely peaceful. Uh, you know, and, and Russia's supply of fuel, we think, is a, a model that uh, uh, Iran uh, should, uh, you know, follow uh, in its ambition for uh, civilian nuclear energy. Uh, but, you know, this should not be confused with uh, our ongoing and the world's fundamental concerns about Iran's violations of international nuclear obligations, particularly in pursuit of, you know, in, in pursuit of uranium and enrichment. Um, Iran says it wants to have full control of, of a fuel cycle to obtain self-sufficiency, but the fact is that Iran does not have you know, sufficient uranium reserves in the country uh, to meet uh, its stated goal. Uh, so this is precisely the kind of international cooperation that we think is appropriate for Iran, and, and it, uh, uh, it undercuts Iran's rationale for why it needs to uh, uh, pursue its own enrichment capability. Uh, Sudan. Um, Former South African President Mbeki said in Khartoum that these talks that, that uh, General Gration uh, referred to last week on the ABA that were to take place this week are not going to take place or that they've been delayed. I'm wondering if you have any information on that and and it doesn't seem as though despite the, the surge, the diplomatic surge that is underway in Sudan that you're getting anywhere in bringing them together on this one element. Well, I think we, we, we acknowledged yesterday that, that the uh, uh, we, we expected the talks would begin in Khartoum and then would uh, you know, move at a point uh, you know, to Addis Ababa. Uh, they were originally scheduled to start tomorrow uh, in Addis Ababa. Uh, General Gration is leaving for the region tonight. Uh, Ambassador Princeton Lyman remains uh, in the region uh, and uh, in, engaged with the parties. Uh, th this remains a challenge. Uh, we, uh, uh, we need to have the parties come together urgently uh, if we're going to have uh, you know, the referenda on ABA and uh, South Sudan occur on time uh, in early January. Uh, uh, at the behest of the parties, uh, uh, former President Mbeki will be leading this next round uh, of discussions. Uh, they'll be uh, about ABA, but also about the full basket of CB CPA uh, obligations. Uh, the parties do not have any time to waste. But do you think that, I mean, it sounds as though, compared to what Ambassador Car uh, Secretary Car Carson said at the UN when they came, when there was an idea that they had a framework for discussing this, it seems as though even the framework is falling apart. I mean, have you, have you made, is, is in fact the situation worse than it was at the, at the, at the end of no, September? It's, it's, I mean, it's not worse. We, we've had constructive uh, discussions. Uh, there are particular um, elements that the parties have to agree to, both in the context of ABA. Uh, and in the context of uh, the referendum on South Sudan. Uh, at, at the present time, while uh, they, they have been, you know, talking about, you know, the, the specifics uh, of, uh, uh, of what, is, what needs to be done, they have not yet arrived at, a, uh, at, at, at firm decisions that, that will allow, uh, you know, the, the process to move forward. Uh, but we had, you know, nine days, I believe, of intensive discussions in Addis Ababa a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they do need to come back together. The sooner uh, uh, we can uh, resume uh, these uh, discussions uh, on a formal basis, I believe, with uh, uh, former President Mbeki in Khartoum, with Princeton Lyman in Khartoum, uh, with others. There, there are discussions going on, whether it's a formal convening uh, of the Addis meeting at this point, 
uh, though we, we, are, we continue to talk to the parties. Uh, we have to come to agreement soon. Uh, and uh, uh, that's, that's why General Gration is, is returning to the region. You're speaking, of, speak, speaking of frameworks perhaps falling apart and discussions going on. I wasn't speaking not, of frameworks falling apart. apart. But uh, what's uh, new in the Middle East peace talks, if anything? Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have nothing specific to report to you. Uh, we continue our, our, uh, our uh, contacts with uh, the parties. Um, and uh, I, I don't have anything to report. Uh, yesterday you said the meetings would start in Juba. Today, now you're saying in Khartoum. No, no, I, I, if I said Juba, I, I was in error. Uh, yeah, in Khartoum, so in Khartoum. Uh, and then we'll move to Addis under the present plan. On the peace process, President Abbas has said uh, yesterday that Israel has been taking unilateral steps for decades by building settlements. Uh, so the Palestinians might take one of their own, asking the United Nations to recognize their independent state. Well, I think our, our position has been pretty clear. Um, uh, we uh, uh, continue to encourage the parties to avoid unilateral steps uh, on one side of the ledger or the other. Uh, our, our position on settlements has not changed. Uh, and uh, we, we continue to encourage the parties uh, to resume direct negotiations as the only mechanism uh, to uh, to resolve uh, these uh, myriad of issues. David. Each the uh, Venezuelan president announced um, the expropriation of the local affiliate of uh, Owens, Illinois, a glass company. It says he has a list of other companies to expropriate. Any reaction to that? Uh, well, I mean, it, it you know, Statements are one thing. We'll we'll see what actual uh, actions uh, you know take place. Uh, but you know, we would expect Venezuela to provide prompt, adequate, and effective compensation uh, for any expropriation of the investments of uh, Owens, uh, Illinois, in accordance with international law, or any other uh, you know private uh, business doing uh, you know, present in, in Venezuela. Lee. You are offering to the Burmese authority after the cyclone, and have they accepted any? Uh, well, any, as, you know, as you recall, you know, um, you know, the last time that uh, you know, that Burma suffered uh, uh, a major natural disaster, the United States offered assistance, and and eventually, uh, you know, Burma uh, accepted that assistance. We've made the same offer uh, once again, uh, depending on uh, the impact of a cyclone. Have they accepted it? Have, what's the response? I, I'm not aware that they've accepted or responded at this point. Okay, thank you. Can you discuss a bit about the agenda for Secret Corinthians meeting with uh, President Lee myung in Hanoi? Also, do you have... <laughs> we just uh, gave you a full briefing. I've got nothing to add to what Kurt Campbell said. Also, do you have any comment on the report that uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-il's first son, Kim Jong-nam, said uh, he did not want to take over North Korea because North Korea will soon collapse. Well, again, you know, Kurt was asked about, uh, uh, about issues of succession, and I've got nothing to add. I just wanted to, I'm uh, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to clarify my question earlier with Mr. Campbell. What was that was that many people, when, when we talk about Asia, we talk only about China, Korea, Japan, few countries, but India is also in Asia. Many people are questioning, uh, especially here, think tanks and also Indian American community. And uh, when she travels all these nations, one, why India was not uh, added to the list, and second, finally, well, right. India is also Goyal. emerging power right. and in, the, in Asia. Right, Goyal, the president is going to India uh, early next month. Uh, the secretary has been to India uh, and it has engaged Indian officials in, to help prepare for, uh, you know, the president's trip. Uh, you know, given the, uh, you know, the competing uh, major, uh, you know, fora that are underway here, the secretary has her agenda. She will not join, uh, you know, the president uh, in India, but others uh, will be uh, in his delegation. Uh, uh, but, the, you know, this is characteristic of our our engagement where, you know, in, in the Asia-Pacific region uh, in the coming days, you'll have the president there, the secretary there, you know, the deputy secretary there, uh, and that, that just gives you a sense of the, of the breadth of the issues that we are uh, wrestling with in the region. Michelle. Uh, 
Thank you. Yeah, Syrian President Bashar Assad has said that uh, the U.S. is creating chaos in every place it, end, uh, it entered, and he mentioned Afghanistan, Somalia, and Lebanon. Do you have anything on that? Um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, let us just say that you know we understand that uh, you know. Uh, I mean, that's right. You know, let me let me start again. <laughs> Retake. Um, you know, President Assad is is uh, is is within his rights to provide you know his critique. Uh, you know, let me do the same. Um, you know, recent Syrian behavior and rhetoric has had a destabilizing effect on Lebanon uh, and the region. That has contributed to uh, you know recent you know, tensions. Um, we understand that you know, certain actors within and outside Lebanon, including Syria, Hezbollah, and Iran, may believe they stand to gain by escalating sectarian tensions in an attempt to assert their own authority uh, over Lebanon. Uh, you know, for example, Syria continues to transfer weapons to Hezbollah and recently issued arrest warrants for 33 Lebanese and foreign nationals, including the Lebanese government state prosecutor and head of the national police. You know, these activities by Syria directly undermine Lebanon's sovereignty and directly undermine Syria's stated commitments you know, to Lebanon's sovereignty uh, and independence. So uh, if, if the issue is you know, who is playing a more constructive role in the region, you know, we stand by uh, our pledge to support a sovereign, stable, and independent Lebanon with strong Lebanese institutions uh, as the only way to realize the best interests of the Lebanese people uh, and the region as a whole. You know, we believe we're playing a constructive role in the region, and we believe that Syria is not. Um, PJ, uh, much as they were, uh, or much as they expressed concern about the Arizona immigration <coughs> law, there are a bunch of Latin American leaders who are expressing some very serious concerns about this legalized marijuana initiative in California um, and the impact it will have on, or the pop, impact it may have on, on U.S. national drug policy. I, I recognize this isn't really a State Department issue per se, but I'm wondering if you have heard directly from people, from Latin American leaders, concerns about this. Uh, and I'm also wondering how you, the federal government might square this, particularly as it relates to foreign policy, um, if the, uh, how you might square the passage, potential passage of this referendum with your national Well, let, 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 so, you know, um, I don't have any marijuana gardens in my book. Uh, but, uh, you know, let us, uh, I mean, we, we understand that uh, uh, a number of countries in the region uh, are watching the developments on the... Uh, 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 the California uh, ballot initiative. Um, let's not get ahead of you know the American voters or the California voters in in, in terms of uh, you know what is uh, uh, what is uh, decided uh, you know next week. And you know uh, the latest I've read on it, it's a it's kind of a toss up. So uh, we we understand it's an issue of concern. We understand obviously that um, you know what is being proposed for California. Uh, may, you know, may be in conflict with the uh, federal statute, and, and we'll work through those issues uh, depending on what happens uh, next week. Okay. And then my last one is uh, <coughs> the UN High Commissioner for Refugees today came out with a statement uh, saying that the latest WikiLeaks um, disclosures uh, show that the uh, U.S. had knowledge of serious, uh, serious abuses and, and uh, continue to turn people by the Iraqis and continue to turn prisoners over to them and says, that this may be a gross violation of international human rights law. I know that you talked yesterday about investigation having to start with the Iraqis, but the High Commissioner is saying the U.S. also has an obligation to investigate. Um, is is the U.S. ready to do this? Well, um, I, I would I would you know go back to statements I think that were also made by uh, General George Casey yesterday. Uh, you know, disputing the idea that we uh, in any way turned our back on on what we saw. Uh, this is an issue that we, uh, you know, talked uh, regularly with the Iraqi government. Uh, uh, but by the same time, you know, we have uh, and are continuing to fulfill not only our international obligations, but our, our obligations to uh, Iraq as a, uh, a sovereign uh, government. Uh, we have a, an agreement uh, with uh, Iraq where we, are t we, we have turned over uh, responsibilities to Iraq as a sovereign government, and and uh, you know these are 
uh, more appropriate questions direct to the sovereign government of Iraq, not the United States. Well, but is the U.S. willing to consider opening investigation into whether the transfer of transfer of prisoners to the Iraqis, not current transfers but past transfers, with knowledge that they uh, of these abuses could could be a violation of, of international law? Uh, I, I will I will take a question as to uh, uh, as to the suggestion uh, that uh, uh, our activities uh, in recent years uh, posed a potential violation. Uh, I think our, our lawyers would suggest it does not. But I'll, I'll take that question. Thank you. Okay.